Okay, so weights, weights training. Uh, first we tune in, get our mind in the right place. Are we going to put a mind on this feeling of life force? Buildable. Just a few breaths, three to nine breaths, just to get your mind there. As soon as you feel it in your hands, expand it across the whole body. Breathe through the pores. As soon as you have that feeling through the whole body, Relax down through the heel, shin, hamstring, abdominal, upper back, bicep, back of the forearm, inside of the hand, on the in-breath. On the out-breath, relax through the ball, calf, quad, lower back, chest, tricep, inside forearm, back of the hand. In-breath, heel, shin, hamstring, abdominals, upper back, bicep, back of the forearm, inside of the hand. And out-breath, ball, calf, quad, lower back, chest tricep, inside form, and back of the hand. Now this is your electric and magnetic line. Now if you're going to uh, put a pushing force, I'm going to push a car, my ball's going to engage, my calf's going to engage, my quad's going to engage, my lower back, my chest, tricep, uh, inside form, back of the hand, are all going to stabilize and produce this pushing force. If I'm in a tug of war and I'm pulling, then the moment I pull my heel, my shin, hamstring, uh, abdominals, upper back, bicep, the back of the forearm, inside the hands are going to be active as I pull. These are all pulling muscles. When we're tuning into life force, this, these lines regulate your electric and magnetic energy of the body. Any action where you're grabbing something, the energy withdraws and there's a magnetic withdrawal of the yi. In order to grab, the mind has to withdraw and pull something in. If you want to push something away, the mind's got to expand and the muscles, the joints expand. So we have this line of the muscles. Next thing we have are the quads. Now, we have eight points on the body which expand and contract. And these eight points are really, really important. <clears throat> when you do a pushing action, and you feel your foot, your, your foot expands and your foot opens. So the, the arch opens and the bow opens up. When you pull, your, your, the, the arch of your foot cups, it withdraws. So pulling action is a cupping action on your foot. Pushing action is an expanding bow on your foot. So this is really, really important that you, you connect this feeling inside your foot. Some people call it a foot pump. Um, there's a lot of different names for it. But be aware of that mechanic of pulling and pushing. The qua. When you fold your qua, you can generate very powerful pushing force. When you open this, you create very, very powerful pushing force. So these two are the next points. So we have two feet, two hips, the, the uh, shoulder. Now if I fold in, I'm creating pulling potential. If I open out, I'm creating pushing potential. So, those are your, your six and set, uh, five and six points. Your seven and eight, your hands. Now, you cup the hand when you want to go magnetic, you're pulling in. If I simply do the gesture of holding water, the act of holding water um, withdraws and creates magnetic energy. So, if you're inside the feeling of life force and you cut both your hands, your polarity of your body will switch to magnetic. If you stretch the hand open, open the bow, your body is as if it's going to push something away, it'll become electric. So we have the foot, whether you cup the foot or stretch it out, you have the qua, fold the qua magnetic, open electric, shoulder, fold for magnetic, open for electric, and the hand. So these eight points combined with that muscle alignment. Uh, you can very, very efficiently control the electromagnetic quality within your energy system. When you put your mind onto that quality and your body mechanics on that quality and awareness of life force onto that quality, say so your mind, chi, body, all supporting the same frequency, it increases in potential. Okay, so Dennis's question was, can I demonstrate how to lift weights? Well, I've only got kettlebells here and they're not really appropriate. But imagine I've got two dumbbells in my hands. Okay. First, I put them on the ground, and I tune into energy. 
in the hands, through the skin, pump the fascia, relax down the magnetic line, up the electric line, down the magnetic line, up the electric line, down the magnetic line, up the electric line. Then magnetic, contract everything into my core, and then electric, open everything up from the core. Magnetic, into the core, expand the core. Now this is simply generated by feeling of relaxing and sinking. My abdominals are not going out, they're not going in, they're just relaxing and dropping into, into itself. So when you, when you relax your diaphragm down to the lower dantian and you relax this whole region, it, it's like a ball that compresses, but you can't really, really see it. It feels like you're, 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 you're compressing a ball. But you just relax and let it happen. That's why I talk about say, natural breathing, that you let it happen naturally through relaxation, but you're regulating the rate of the breath. The breathing regulates uh, stress in your body. If you're going to lift a heavy weight, there's a pause where your body will naturally sense the amount of pressure that's being put on it. So now when I go down to pick these weights up and I, I want to bring them off the ground, the moment I start to bring them off the ground, there'll be a pause. And you'll notice it's very natural where your breath, your diaphragm, checks how much pressure is on it and your fascia adjusts itself. Now when you lift up with the dumbbells, you've got this pressure on, your breathing just naturally returns to normal. Now this pause is very momentary, it happens in a fraction of a second. Uh, a power lifter, it's very exaggerated. You look at a power lifter, they, uh, uh, they will have this huge strain, huge pause within their break when they load the, load the elasticity, load the fascia, then they continue breathing as they generate the momentum wave, as they strain through it. We want to be aware of that pause and use that pause as a door to get the life force to penetrate through the muscles, release the muscles, increase the amount of fascia being used, and reduce the amount of muscle tension there. Because the elasticity in fascia is much stronger than muscle. Once I have this, this weight, I relax through the magnetic line, and I pump through the electric line, I just relax my hands up with the, with the dumbbells and then back down the magnetic line and up the electric line. Down, up. Now there's about one to two inch pumping movement inside my body. So the body's rising as it goes through electric, dropping through the magnetic. So I'm moving ball, calf, quad, lower back, chest, tricep, as I'm coming up, and then heel, shin, hand, and door, back, biceps as I'm going down. And just work these lines. Now, as I'm going up, you'd say, well, I'm working the bicep, why am I going through the triceps? It, uh, any action that pushes the ball, electric, and has a quality of expanding, um, will naturally go to the electric side. You can reverse the polarity of these movements and explore them. But the idea is simply to pump the energy. Now once you've done the up and down model, then rather than moving the head, pumping it up and down, you move from the dantian, from the center. So you go into your core, out of your core, into your core, out of your core. Now the exercise might be that you have a weight here, and then you go expand the core, contract the core. Expand the core, contract the core. Expand the core, contract the core. So you might have some elastic cords behind you or on a pulling machine, and you have a pushing action and a pulling action. Pushing action and pulling action. So you're working these uh, electromagnetic lines of the body as you do these exercises. When you put the weight down, go back to life force, calibrate, Tune back in and breathe life force for the duration of your one minute break. Uh, now, human growth hormone. If you keep your breaks down to one minute, research says you get more HGH being produced in your body. Uh, so keep your breaks to one minute. HGH helps everything inside your body, uh, not just your muscles.
it makes everything grow, so it's a good thing. When you start off with this exercise, start very, very light until you get your technique right. Then go build up, build up to go extremely heavy. You can lift more weight using this method than you can trying to engage muscle. Uh, because the fascia is simply stronger than the muscle and the muscle is supporting it anyway. You can't just switch your muscles off. The muscles will always be engaging whether we like it or not. But when we transfer the loads from the muscle <coughs> uh, to the fascia, they are supporting each other much more efficiently. And that's what we're after. We want the uh, muscle uh, and the fascia to work together, but we're looking, we're, we're transitioning more towards the fascia. Uh, most people are working in a state of unbalance. They've got too much muscle engaging, it's less efficient. Uh, the internal approach, much more efficient, relaxing, hanging the muscle on the bone, and then letting the fascia work. Very, very similar to a cable bridge. Uh, the muscle, when it hangs on the bone, is what we call a catenary curve. So if I take a chain and I hang a chain, there's a curve at which it hangs. Now, if I pull the chain taut and then s drop it back slightly, just one inch of pressure off, it'll drop and then it'll curve back up. So it'll, it'll make a rather s steep angle towards the bottom of the curve. Now, when we hang a muscle, it's, it's got tension, we take tension out, it has a slight drop. We want to put all our loads through those cables, like a cable bridge, through that stretch. When a person puts a force, we meet the force, we connect to the root, and then we, we drop and stretch. Now as we drop and stretch, it supports that load, and our body becomes a cable bridge. Uh, but this cable bridge is very, very complex. It has thousands of lines of fascia inside of it, which are all supporting itself like a web. And that web is incredibly strong, a bit like a spider web. It has a lot of strength to it. Okay, so, so that's, that's uh, the component for weights. Um, the, uh, the next question that came out on the internet is how do you make a heavy bridge? Uh, this uh, gentleman is a Wing Chun uh, fellow and he wants to make his bridge except, exceptionally heavy and strong. And um, uh, the exercise I recommend for this <coughs> Uh, using a set of bathroom scales. Now, this set of bathroom scales um, is a spring type. Spring types work better than digital because digital sort of have a have a set and set mark, and you um, they don't very really, they don't work well for the exercise. So what you want to do is um, first put it down by yourself. Okay. So here I'm uh, I'm just a touch over 120 kilos. Now what I want to do is look at what's one quarter of my body weight. It's about um, 30 kilos. So, I want to put this on the wall. Flat wall is better. Uh, I want to press onto it until it gets to about 30 kilos. So now I'm going up 40, 50, 60, 70. I want around 70 kilos there. But what I'll do is, is take it back to 30. Now I want to relax. Move my hips. Keep it on around 30 and just relax the body. Notice my hips side to side. Keep my shoulders moving side to side. Hang the muscles. Relax, 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 relax. Do this for about one minute. Put the scales back down on the ground and then vital breathe again. Uh, if you have something where you can leave the scales, you know, uh, on the wall, maybe some Velcro or, or some sort of bracket system, it works very, very effectively. <coughs> Uh, and then repeat. I'm going to do about five one minute sets of just holding that weight, relaxing, hanging the muscles, transferring your body weight from your hands onto the, onto the scales. Look at about one quarter of your body weight. If that's too much for, for you, then, then drop it down a little bit. Then move from a quarter and just small increments go heavier, heavier, heavier. Obviously, the more body weight you push onto the scales, the uh, 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 more tension you get in your muscles, and the more deeper you have to go to release it. We're not building muscle tension here, we're building fascia. So tune into the life force, breathe into your hands, build the ball, whole body breathing, then drop 
and stretch onto the scales. Push your weight. Once you get to the reading you want, relax, hang the muscles, switch the load from the muscle to the fascia. About one minute of just loosening, keep your hands on the scales. This moving the hip forward and backward makes your roof invisible. Uh, most people are very, very clunky when they move, but by having a high pressure on your hands and relaxing everything under that pressure and waving it backwards and forwards allows you to load a force inside your body and then deliver that force and the person who you're touching doesn't feel it coming. They, they, they won't have any awareness of it. So this, <clears throat> this bathroom scale exercise, uh, you have a whole range of, of, of lines that you can do it on. Put the scales on the wall again, sideways, touch your knife hand onto it, relax and sink. And again, get as much weight as you can onto it using muscle, relax back a little bit and then sung, 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 hold it a minute. Do both hands. You can do all the different shapes that you want, a straight punch, palms, uh, 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 tiger claws. Uh, then once you've done your verticals, change your angle. Uh, if you have an arm palm log, put the scales onto your arm palm log, drop your hand on the scale, and see how much force, that you, how much weight, should I say, you can transfer. Then relax and hang your body weight onto your arm, relax the muscles again, and uh, uh, measure how much weight transfer you've got. Force is mass times acceleration minus a dissipated force at the point of contact. So, mass. How do we get more mass there? Relax. The more relaxed you are, the more you use your fascia, the more whole body connection you have, and the more mass you can get onto your hand. If you try to engage the muscle, the, the, the muscle will contract into thinner lines, and you're not getting as much mass there. You want to be heavy whole body, body weight mass onto your hand. Gradually increase it. It took me about 12 months of going to the gym and just relaxing under the pulley machines, relaxing under weights before I could get my whole body weight to arrive on my hands. So I made a, made a goal of 100 kilos that I wanted to be able to put on the bathroom scales on, on different shapes. The stronger shapes being your elbows, not on the center line, but just down around the shoulder line, pushing forward. You work that line first. Get really, really strong on that line because that's that's your main line for punching and palms and striking. Your guard, your your your, your main core strength for uh, for Tai Chi and Wing Chun come through that line. <clears throat> Once you've worked a whole range of angles, you're getting your body weight to arrive on your hands. You'll find some angles you get five kilos, and you go, "Holy crap! Five kilos is nothing. I need a lot more than five kilos there because of mass." Times acceleration minus dissipated force um, uh, is, your, is how much power you're producing. So we want to get a whole body weight, a whole mass under our hands. Acceleration happens through elasticity. So as we relax, then we can accelerate. So by relaxing and sinking, we're getting increased mass, we're getting increased acceleration because we're working through elasticity. That means we can move our body weight up and down through the elasticity of our body. Stick to the target. Here we're sticking to the scales and relaxing and sinking into it. So there's a good transfer of force. When you hit a wooden dummy, you stick to the dummy. You never pull your hand straight off. When you hit the wall bag, you stick to the wall bag, you sink down and then stick. So you get an efficient transfer of force from your body, from your root through the bag. So Wing Chun, stick to the target as they hit it. This really, really uh, increases the amount of force being transferred, decreases the amount of dissipated force upon contact. Now, if you, if you ever worked with an old school boxer and you're hitting the, hitting the focus mitt, they'll say, stick the leather of your glove to the pad. Make sure you stick. This is just the old school way of, of saying, don't let force dissipate. Stick to the target. Okay, so heavy hands for Wing Chun. Bathroom scales. Touch the scale, relax and stretch, 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 transfer your mass. The reason why we use bathroom scales, you could just do this on the wall and touch the wall and relax and stretch, but you have no measurement. You, you, you're not, you don't know how much pressure you're putting there. Uh, old spring style 
uh, bathroom scales allows you to stand on the scale that I weigh this much, I'm getting this much relaxed pressure on my hands as a percentage of my body weight and gives you a goal. You want to get your body weight onto your hands. You want to be able to get that point, match that point and go, ah, okay, I've got my whole body weight arriving in my hands. Force equals mass times acceleration. I know 100 kilos plus is on my hands. I'm accelerating that 100 kilos plus. There's a potential, huge potential force there. It's like putting a few bags of concrete in someone's hands, say catch, and dropping it on them. Um, people's bodies simply can't deal with those sorts of forces. So this is how you can get very heavy hands in Wing Chun. The basic rules, vital breathe. Everything has to be through this mental quality that is in your mind. If you build a mental quality of, of life force and you put high levels of stress on the life force, the life force gets stronger. The life force is in your mind, it's in your energy system, it's in your body. They all get stronger via the life force. This is what makes it internal. If you just relax onto your fascia and you do the exercises purely as a body focus exercise, you'll get strong in the body, but your mind will not be able to utilize that force outside the body. So there's a limitation which gets placed upon it. Uh, what develops high level training is this idea that it's all in your mind. Now, People, when, we, when I say that, will go, well, if it's all in my mind, it's not the physical. Your mind is the physical. Mind is all the energy realms. Mind is all the spiritual realms. Mind is everything. The universe is mind. Now, when you get that idea that when you lift a weight or you're doing this exercise, you're developing mental strength. And that mental strength is expressing itself physically. It's got a physical outlet. But you're developing mental power. That mental power is then always accessible. But if you just concentrate on physical power, that means you've detached the strength of your mind and you're, you're, you're isolating it to just the one function of, of doing the weightlifting exercise or that. When it's mind which is doing it, the mind becomes stronger, it's able to apply its strength to anything it does. So it becomes more diverse, it's more usable. It's also able to influence and affect things outside of its own physical body. Because mind can extend, mind's not subject to space. This is how empty force works. It's a mental quality and that's all the only difference between uh, conventional physical training and internal training. There's a difference in mental quality. Now you hear all these things about all different types of body mechanics that you have to do for internal. Yeah, they work, but that's not why they work. They work because of the mind. If the mind is in a different place when it does something, it develops internal power, it develops mental force. I've taught hundreds and hundreds of teachers, this is my, what my job is. and. These guys have been coming to have incredible power, they have incredible internal strength, but mostly they haven't developed the mind. They haven't developed the mental concentration, how to expand the yi, how to listen, how to feel with their mind, how to develop their intuition. Uh, and, and as they develop that, their power goes through the roof. Because they've, always, they've already got a huge amount of internal power. They're doing a standing exercise for years, the structural integrity is amazing. They've got core strength, they've got everything they need. They just have to put the power in the right place. So, we want to put all this, all the strength, whether you're lifting a weight, doing the, the heavy bridge training, and make it a mental quality. Now, at the moment, these are just words. When you practice it, and you put the power into your mind, the mind will occupy, occupy more space than the physical body and activity you're doing. And this is really important. So that we build a bridge. Physical activity, whether we're doing aerobics, MMA, jogging, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's the awareness of the act. Integrate life force, and so we have life force and activity together. Then expand the year, the awareness beyond the body through the activity, through the life force, we have mind, body. 
When, we, when these three things move together as a synchronized connection, that fusion generates a, a type of yi, a type of mind force. And that is what you're developing. That is what gives empty force. That is what uh, gives all different types of metaphysical phenomena. It's developing the mind qualities and, and stressing those. Now, a fundamental truth is that stress generates evolution. Stress is, is a trigger for chaos. You put a system in a chaos, it has to reorganize itself, adapt, and evolve to a higher level to deal with those stresses. When we're putting a stress on the body, uh, the body, the fascia detects that stress, it transfers the load through the body, relax them, release the muscles. It gets a signal. It generates chemistry. We have to make this fascia stronger. There's fascia wrapped around your bone. When that gets stressed, it goes, hey, we've got to make these bones stronger. Your bones generate pieces of electricity, lots of happy chemicals flow through them, your bones grow. Every time you put a stress on your system, your system gets stronger. This applies to emotional stress. You, you, you put a lot of pressure on a person psychologically, they get stronger psychologically. They have to deal with it. Some people suppress it, some people will release it. Everyone has a different way of dealing with it, but they'll get a, they'll get a thick skin in a balanced or unbalanced way. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, deal with it. Same with mental stress. Uh, with mental stress, you give, give a person a mental um, uh, thing to work out, uh, an equation, uh, a problem to find a solution. Uh, when they first look at it and they don't understand, they're stress. They, they create space, they find a solution, stress is released, the, the, the brain raises to a higher level and its, its problem solving's ability uh, increase. So mental stress, emotional astral stress, physical stress, that's what makes us grow. Um, doing standing exercises are really good for developing structure but there's not enough stress in it. They're good for concentrating the mind because it's a, it's a nice challenge to do in a stillness while, while in that position but if you want really, really high levels of stress, go do powerlifting. When you do a power lift, the amount of stress in your body, the amount of stress in your fascia, the amount of stress emotionally, the amount of stress psychologically, mentally, is huge. If you can keep the yi expanded, don't contract the muscle, just keep the mind out, expand the chi, and then do that power lift, you get huge gain out of it. Huge, huge gain. What your mind is doing regulates the gains. If your mind contracts to the body, the body gets the gain. If your mind expands through the life force and the yi all expands around you spherically while you do it, your body gets gain, your life force energy system gets gain, your will power gets gain, and deeper parts of your mind that are being activated become stronger. You become a stronger, more willful person that can apply your will to many other things in your life. Okay, so that's a little bit on, on strength training and the heavy bridge. Now, for the Wing Chun practitioner, we would add to that the wooden dummy. Now, when you touch your wooden dummy, whether it's a pax, a bong, so whatever the shape is, touch the root of the dummy, get, sink the bridge. Now, from your root, it comes up and it goes into the root of the dummy. So you're, you're forming uh, a curve, a catenary curve, or should I say a catenary arch, from your root, up over the top of the bridge, down to the root of the dummy, or the person. Touch and stretch and open the joints. Feel that connection into the root of the dummy. Now relax your line, spend a moment wobbling your line, getting everything nice and loose, and then move into the next move, and then check the lines. So that's a really good way of starting to get the pressures right. Determine whether the movement is a magnetic or electric. Pax is electric coming out. Then if you grab with your fingers, it becomes magnetic. Bong sao could be electrical or magnetic. You could have magnetic pulling in with the bong sao, so it has this sort of quality, or electric pushing out. Electric can take, go any direction, and magnetic can go any direction. It doesn't have to go purely in. It can be pulling down, it can be pulling up, pulling left, has a, has a pulling uh, quality. So when you're working on the wooden dummy, um, but really heavy loads, same as the bathroom scales, you want to get your whole weight on the bathroom scales and relax into elasticity. Put your whole weight on the dummy, relax into the elasticity. Same thing. 
The dummy allows you to, to occupy all the main shapes of Wing Chun and develop those structures and those strengths in your bridge. All those angles, you should be able to transfer your whole body weight onto any of those angles, and that's what gives you tremendous power in your hands. Once you're able to relax your, your body weight onto your hands, it is very, very difficult for anyone to move you. So when you're doing push hands, structural breaking with people, they can't move you because you just put 100 kilo on your hand, and it's unmovable for them. And the speed at which you can move your mass around your hands uh, and through their body regulates their uh, ability to influence your center of balance. This makes you incredibly strong. The next thing it does is it increases the bone density on your arms, so your arms can take an incredible amount of um, pressure. And uh, uh, as that increases, when you put your hands on people, if you accelerate 100 kilos of weight through the blade of your forearm, onto someone else's arm, it's going to hurt. It's sort of like accelerating several bags of concrete onto someone's bridge through a thin little bone wedge and uh, people simply can't train with you because it hurts them way too much. Uh, and it's just a simple process of transferring mass. You have to learn how to transfer mass through relaxed waves through your hands. With the wooden dummy training, a lot of people will keep stay what they call traditional and they'll leave their dummy the way it is. A big lump of wood. When you hit a wooden dummy, uh, if you're hitting a, a, the trunk and it's hardwood, uh, it's going to hurt. This is not good. The reason why it's not good, it creates a psychological barrier on applying full force in a strike and that's the last thing you want. When you hit a wooden dummy, you want to hit that wooden dummy with full power, 100%. If you look at why did Muay Thai dominate the striking arts for so many years, and still do, and they challenged all the Kung Fu guys, the Korean Taekwondo guys, everybody in the world. And very few people could knock out a Muay Thai guy without actually training Muay Thai. It was because they hit their pads 100% every single time they touched a pad. There was no half power in a round kick, it was only 100% power. And those guys that trained that electricity in their body to be 100% all the time reached the top. And they're very hard to beat because if they hit you, you're gonna, you're gonna, they're going to break you. Wing Chun guys have this strange idea that I'm just going to tap the wooden dummy and build something. They're building really weak, useless hands that can't transfer any power. Because that's their habit. Their habit is not to transfer power. Their muscle memory is not to transfer power. So this creates a problem. Now, most Wing Chun people have the common sense to throw that idea out. But some people stick to, to what they call traditional uh, Wing Chun and they just tap the dummy. If you can't hit it with full power, don't even bother doing it. You, you do yourself a disservice. So, what do you, how do we get around this? You get some... Um, uh, jigsaw matting, which they put on the floors of martial arts schools, 38 mil. You cut it out and wrap it around your wooden dummy. In the, in the 80s, I just got my uh, wall bags, and I, I screwed the, the sandbags onto the, the front face of the dummy, and I used that for my training so I could hit it full power. Uh, later, I wrapped it with jigsaw matting, 38 mil jigsaw mat. Uh, you can put a bit of leather over the top and staple it in if you want it to look better. And then you can punch with full power, but only from, from arm length. So from when you, when you touch a wooden dummy, you can go full power into it, no problems, uh, and uh, you, you, the risk of injury is very, very low, uh, providing all your body's aligned properly. Uh, you wouldn't go full power from a distance like a boxer, because you'd hurt yourself. It's too much acceleration, your joints are going to buckle. So for short range, you can go full power. And Wing Chun only goes from short range. Wing Chun wants to touch, break structure, and then shoot. So, uh, uh, it's perfect for Wing Chun. The arms, you build up full power very, very quickly in your arms. It only takes a few months before you can put a lot of bridge strength, put your whole body weight through your arms, your bone density increases, and your body springs are transferring force much, much more efficiently. Okay, well, 